Yeah, good evening, brethren. Is my speaker okay? Yes, my mic? Yes, All right. Yes, All right. Yes, fine. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, just like uh, our brother Wisdom has uh, already said, um, tonight uh, I'll be checking from uh, 1 John uh, chapter 2, from verse 24, I think, yeah, I'm starting from 24. Um, just uh, in line with uh, what our, our brother, Victor, um, uh, taught us last week, from 24, um, 24 basically, um, speaks about uh, we remaining in uh, in the words that we have heard. Um, then I'll have to read it so that we can all follow up. First John um, from verse 24. 24 reads, As for you, see that what you have heard from the beginning remains in you. If it does, you also will remain in the Son and in the Father. 25. And this is what the promise and this is what he promised us, internal life. I'm writing this, these things to you about those who are trying to lead you astray. As for you, the anointing you receive from him remains in you. And the, you, you do not need anyone to teach you but as his anointing teaches you about all things, and as that anointing is real, not counterfeit, just as it has taught you, remain in him. I think this is the key uh, scripture we'll be using this evening. And basically, uh, from this 24, uh, it was made clear to us, uh, the importance of uh, we remaining uh, in the the gospel that we've already got, because um, the word, um, like we have it here, remain. Um, some some translation uh, uses um, abide. Some say um, some use uh, continue. Some uses uh, live on or hold on onto. You see, in all, all of them comes to one thing, in a way that we should uh, remain with the gospel that we've heard. So basically, that is about this 24. And uh, first of all, I want to, us to uh, read from uh, John 15. John 15 from verse uh, 15 from verse four to six, I mean, yeah, four to six. The book of John. John 15, four to six. And he reads, remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by its by itself 
it must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and the wither. Such branch are picked up, thrown into fire and burned. Um, as we can see from this uh, very um, chapter, it tells us how we should remain in Christ because there is no Christ without the gospel and there is no gospel without Christ. The remaining in the words that we have heard is the gospel, which is the word of God, as we all know. Why am I saying this? We know that um, uh, the life we live today, there's a lot of uh, um, confusion out there, which uh, literally people are using the, the same word of God that we, we are studying. People are using it in different ways to, uh, you know, confuse others. Which we know from this, uh, the first uh, place we read, which is John to, uh, 2, verse 24. It warns us that we should remain in him when in the word which we have heard. Because first of all, we know that before we got baptized, we heard the, the word and we believed in it. We know that this is the true, the truth that we've got. So now, if it is easy for us to hear the word, believe it, and also lose out of out from the word. What I'm trying to say is this: uh, if, like, if someone, like, uh, being a Christian, maybe um, someone happened to maybe you have a Bible study with someone. While studying, there are some things that maybe the person will read from the scripture, which you yourself, if you are not uh, careful, you might ask yourself, ah, you may maybe you might be convinced and say, ah, I haven't seen this from the, the Bible. So now, but if you know what you believe, if you truly know what you believe and know the, the word that you, you heard and the, the gospel that you believe. You'll be able to figure out when someone is preaching to you or trying to, you know, take you out of the way of the gospel. You'll be able to tell yourself, no, this is not the right thing. This is not the right way. Because already you've known the word and the word is in you. You'll be able to, when that person is speaking, you'll be able to figure it out and say, no, this is not the right word. Then you call yourself to order and be able to preach to that person and they, you know, sort out things. So in this uh, um, context, if you um, you don't have the the the, the strong uh, knowledge of the word of the word that you believe, it is easy, mostly with the way things are now in this life, that people preach different gospel. It is easy for one to be carried away with the uh, um, fake doctrines around. So that is the importance of this. Uh, we um, remaining in the, the the way that we've we've been preached to, and the way which we accepted. Yeah. So we also uh, we have another example from the the uh, from First Corinthians fifteen from verse one. 1 Corinthians 15, from verse 1 um, to 4. Um, and it reads here, Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, 
which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved. If you hold firmly, if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I receive, I pass on to you as of first, first importance that Christ died for our sin, according to the scripture, verse four, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day, according to the scripture. This is the gospel and this is all we believe. Imagine someone like we have heard now coming to you know tell you something that is far away from this the, the the true gospel which you have received being that you know about it you will be able to know this is exactly the right way but you can only you can only uh defend the gospel when you allow it to live in you to remain in you which is what uh, uh, 1 John 2 verse 24 is warning us. Because it, it didn't start here. It has been, the warning has been sounded uh, far before that knowing that there could be something like this, like things we are passing on through, uh, through today. There could be something like this. That, that's why uh, this, the, the warning has been sounded clearly on 1 John 2 verse 24 here which is wanting us to remain, you know, in the gospel that we have received. So that is the gospel that I've just read now from uh, 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 1 to 4. So um, also in Galatians, we have another word here from Galatians, uh, the letter written by Apostle Paul to the Galatians, um, first. Galatians 1, chapter 1, uh, we read from 6 to 9. Galatians chapter 1, we read from verse 6 up to 9. Um, this is from Apostle Paul to the Galatians, which also we are also included today because we are being also given the same warning and it's read i am i'm astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of christ and are turning to a different gospel which is really not gospel at all evidently some people are throwing you into confusion and they are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let them be under God's cause. And we have already said we have already said, so now I say again, if anyone, if anybody is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accepted, let them be under God's cause. We know the one is clear, the word is clear. We know the gospel and we've been warned beforehand here, knowing that uh there could be uh fake doctrines people can make up uh their fallacies stories about the gospel preaching a different thing but in, uh according to the letter that uh, apostle paul wrote to the galatians here he won them at hand knowing that out there there will be a lot of uh, fake doctrines that will be there. But 
if we are prepared, if we have the knowledge of the truth, which is the gospel, it will not be difficult for us to, uh, to understand exactly when we have been uh, trying to lead astray. So it's only when we don't study the word, only when we don't allow our um, this, the word to live in us, that is when we have it as problem for us not to be able to uh, define the gospel, the gospel of Christ, which is the, the only true gospel that we've been given to. Um, also in the uh, in, in book of uh, Colossians, also the letter written by Apostle Paul, uh, So the Colossians, we read from Colossians uh, 2, from uh, chapter 6 to 8. And it reads, So then, just as you receive Christ, Christ Jesus, as Lord, continue to live your life in him. Rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and the overflowing with thankfulness. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and the deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition. and the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. We know um, that all this, that we've been, all these warnings, uh, the only thing that can make it uh, possible for us to stand the test of this uh, go, uh, true gospel is only if we, according to the the first uh, uh, chapter we read, which is John chapter two, uh, chapter two, by uh, from verse twenty four, which want us to remain in the uh, uh, the way that we've heard. How can we remain in it? This is what we need to understand. Because the, the warnings have been, uh, you know, a lot. But now, we as human, we ask ourselves, how can we understand, how can we remain on it, the true gospel? Then uh, we read from John. The book of John 14, chapter 14. Um, let's read the John 14, uh, 17. Seventeen reads, the spirit of truth, the world cannot accept him because it's Neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be will be in you. This is the spirit that God has given to us, which is the, the, the true spirit, which we can be able to know the 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 true gospel. You know, like what uh, this very chapter now, 
takes me back my mind back uh while i i said earlier that we have to be careful and allow the word you know to live in us it was a uh, last uh, week before last i was preaching on um, um on facebook so i came across a, a certain video from a nigerian pastor the 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 title of the uh, the caption on the video reads the truth that no one else could tell you so i i i became curious so i tried to watch that video i had this uh, so called man of god um preaching to the congregants telling them that uh, by uh, um Bible is not the word of God. And as he was preaching, people were shouting, praising, and they clapping hand. So he came to the aspect of saying that uh, the Bible tells us that uh, 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 the, that money is evil. How come Bible is deceiving us? Because he now said, made a, a, an example about King James. He said, the publisher of King James uh, Bible, they are the one of the richest uh, publishing uh, companies in the world today. But how come they tell us that money is evil? So why would people believe in Bible? Why would people read Bible that and, and they uh, deceive themselves that is the word of God? So this so-called man of God was saying a lot of things which I will not call nonsense. For sake, but I, I don't want to condemn that. But what I'm trying to say is, I could feel it myself, asking myself, look at the whole congregation, everybody's clapping hand, jubilating, that they are hearing the truth that you know no one else could tell them except the man of God. And what is the truth about it? Telling someone that uh, the Bible is not the word of God, giving an example that. A, a, a company that um, a publishing company that publishes by Bible makes a lot of money, and they, they say the mon they, that money is evil. Why? So what I'm trying to say in this aspect is, if someone like you have the 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 knowledge of the truth, you will be able to even when you are in that kind of situation or being maybe you've been in their midst, you'll be able to tell yourself no. This is far uh, uh, from the truth. But those people who are there, those thousands of uh, um, congregants who are there, to them, you know, there are they, they, they are most of them who maybe uh, within them they will also be asking themselves question: Could this be the truth? Could this be the true gospel? But most of the, most of the people there, they will be convinced with that word. So that's why we have to be careful of what we hear, things we listen and things we watch. This, I spoke uh, this to my wife after then. I told my wife, I said, this is why most of the programs, I don't like us to watch them. Because for someone who doesn't, who, whose faith is not being rooted, you know, in the word of God, it will be easy for you to start thinking, oh, maybe what this person is saying is the truth. So this is why they this uh, we've been won in different um, in the in different uh, part of the scripture, telling us to be careful. And the only way we can be careful, it is when we are able to study the word of God. You see, because when we uh, 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 when we hear the word of God, we believe in it, and we confess and be baptized. Unless we believe, we don't, we tell ourselves that what we believe is not true, which the Bible have said to us. But if we believe that what we be, what we have we believe that gospel that we received, which we confess and get baptized, is the truth. So why would someone tell you that the Bible is not the word of God? Yeah, and again, um, from this uh, very chapter that we read from uh, First John, another thing that uh, I'm trying to bring for, to us to discuss this night is, 
Um, one of our brethren, uh, I had a, a discussion with him last time. He was asking me this question. He said, he asked their teacher that, the, is it possible for someone to fall uh, after being uh, baptized or become a Christian for someone to fall out? Is it possible? Then I tried to understand what he was trying to ask. So I find out at last that from what he was saying is like, if someone, um, you now, you, you, you believe in the gospel and you got baptized, that God will not allow you to perish because his grace, you know, covers you. So this is what he was trying to explain that because for the love that he has for us, that he, has, he promised us, is it possible for him to allow us to fall out and go to hell? So, uh, and this brother also uh, quoted to uh, from the 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 account of the the um, the prodigal son. You know, he preached. He, he was like bringing that example how um, the father welcomed uh, the son back, and they you know uh, celebrated his uh, uh, his coming back to to the family. You know, so if he said, he now said, if a father could do that to the son, how do I think that God will allow someone whom he loved to fall out and perish? So now, if you look at this now, like what we are talking about, you will know that if we have a choice, because the gospel is there for us. Now, if someone already believed and be baptized, you will become a Christian. You have been added to the body. Then you allow yourself to be deceived. Now you fall out of the faith. Now the gospel means nothing to you. How do you blame God for that? How do you, who will you blame for that? These are the things that uh, we need to understand that the word of God is like, it's our guide. So the word of God is our anchor. It guides, guides us from, for us to know the truth. It guides us against all these um, feeble, uh, uh, feeble uh, uh, preachings that are going everywhere. You know, if we have the, the, the knowledge of the truth, that's the only way we can be able to stand. But we should not take it for granted to tell ourselves that because uh, God loves us, because Christ gave his life for us, then uh, that is now we have automatic uh, ticket to internal life or to salvation, no matter what we do. It doesn't work that way. So in addition to that, uh, I think uh, uh, maybe, uh, I hope I'm not going too far. Um, I think maybe in this time we will open up that, uh, let's have this um, study as an interactive study. If there's anyone maybe that have questions so far from what we have discussed and the floor is open, please, but Let's try not to go out of the topic we have uh, tonight. Let the questions be within the context that we are in this evening, which is uh, from John chapter uh, First John chapter two, from twenty four. Yeah, which is about uh, uh, we allowing the word to remain in us. So if there's anyone that uh, have any question or any uh, input on that, you are more than welcome to raise your hand so that wisdom will acknowledge you then. If it's a question that I cannot answer, 
I think we have able brothers, uh, Bro Stephen, the uncle, and all of them. They they can assist to answer the question. Before I continue, Bro Wisdom. Hello. Yes, Brother Mazi. Yeah. Okay, Brother Stephen. So I, I'm just uh, asking if there's anyone that have any input so far or any question from what I've said. The person is more than welcome to. But the, if there's no question or any input, I will continue. Oh, it looks like you must continue. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, in the same way, um, <coughs> also, uh, we we'll have um, another example in the in First John. Three verse twenty four. First John three verse twenty four. And he reads, The one who keeps God's command commands lives in him, and he in them. And this is how we us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. Um God, we know that God gave everybody uh the spirit. But the spirit is something that we need to strengthen and feed it. So what I mean by that is the spirit that God has given to us, we have to nurture that spirit. How can we nurture the spirit? It's by feeding the spirit with the same word of God. So the more we, we study the word of God, is the more we feed the spirit. Our spirit becomes strong to resist things that uh, are not of God. So in this aspect, we know that no matter how um, the kind of spirit you have, if you uh, if you are not uh, what I mean is if you are not if you are keeping yourself busy with things that are not uh, that what I mean is if you are not keeping yourself busy with the word of God, there are a lot of things out there that can distract you. But we also have, we all have the spirit that God has given to us. It's by the time we keep studying the word of God, by the time we keep doing the right thing, that's when we build up the spirit. And that spirit now becomes antibody that stands for us. So that when that uh, wind of uh, false doctrine comes, we, our spirit will help us to stand. And it all will be made possible. We don't need any other uh, uh, tonic or any other uh, uh, antibodies except the gospel. That is all we need. So the gospel, it has been proven that it is enough for all that we need to be a good Christian and to stand the test of this gospel, fake doctrines. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, we we just yeah. Okay, I'm also hello, bro. Yes, bro. Stephen. Uh, can I just yeah? Can I just come in here? Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, you have. Uh, I also prepared because Brother Paul said I needed to be the guide here tonight. And okay. all the verses that you 
But since I'm on the air, I also recorded all the verses, but that was now on my last uh, taking, bringing together. I would okay. put it like that. So um, when we, when we, uh, the topic tonight is abide. Yes, it yeah. is the it is the gospel which is draws us into the uh, uh, community of Christ. If I must put it like that. So when yeah. we read like verse, verse twenty four, as we take out, as we take our our cue from there. As for you, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. Now, there's two words in that verse which is now the that is now the cue that we take is the word abide and is the word beginning. And uh, if we only read verses 22, because in verses 26, he would say, These things I have written to you concerning those who are trying to deceive you. Rightfully, you did refer to Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 to 9, where the Apostle Paul says, I am amazed that you are so quickly deceived by another gospel while there is not another gospel, but only that some people are misleading you. I'm maybe just using my own words there. But um, yes, uh, abide. Uh, because the Antichrist, look, uh, verse 20, um, was it verse 22, which says, who is the liar? but the one who denies that Jesus is the Christ. This is the Antichrist, the one who denies the Father and the Son. And so we can see both these are together. Abide from the beginning, all that because of the gospel, as you have explained now to everyone, the gospel that draw us together together. And these, John is writing to, to them because um, it is no new, uh, uh, something new that they are receiving. The gospel that they were preaching from the beginning, and if we must now say from Acts chapter 2, where the Apostle Paul stood up and he preached the gospel, and, 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 and the Jews had to ask, brothers, what must we do? And he said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That beginning, the word has gone through. By the time when John wrote this letter, it was maybe already 50 years after the, the, the crucifixion or after the Pentecost. Yet he, he, he refers them back. Now, that is why... Uh, the, 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 we, uh, as Brother Paul said, talk is cheap, you know, like, yeah. like, uh, 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 um, we must prove what we believe in. We, uh, uh, uh the, the word of God, as, as I say here, uh, you cannot, and there are some churches today that. Worship only God the Father. Or even they will not even say God the Father, because if you must say God the Father, then you must also say God the Son. So because they don't believe in, in, in God the Son. So they will just have uh, a God of, of Jehovah, uh, as they will call his name. And and you cannot have the one without the other. And uh, so Abide and rightfully you did, uh, Marzi. You read uh, 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 John chapter 15 uh, uh, as to the vine, where he says, You must abide in me. If you do not abide in me, then you will not be fruitful. So, this is uh, 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 this abiding in Christ 
all of us, when we made that decision to serve the Lord, when we made that decision, says, Jesus, I will follow you. Come what may, I will follow you. That means you remain in the Lord. Because verse 25 has got the has got the, has got the uh, the reward. He said, and this is the promise which he himself made for us to us eternal life. So um when we abide in him. That means we have received the God. And even us, even even we that we we that today are followers of Jesus, we can also say that we are obedient to the word of God that was preached in the beginning. Because many gospels today, rightfully as you said, people are preaching. Uh, 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 strange gospels today because it's, it's gospels which, which they picked up down the other day. It's gospels which they go to school and they sit there and they work out topics and well that is my take on this. They work out topics and they uh, think what is the most profitable topic to go out and preach to a gullible world and then you get this uh, 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 prosperity gospels and faith healing gospels and money gospels. Talk is cheap. We need to prove everything. And we today as the church, the church of Christ, we are obedient even today. Even if this Sunday coming, you must make that decision to to uh, to uh, change your life to say from now on I am a child of God through Jesus Christ our Lord and you remain uh, and you abide in him in the two well but when you want to make that decision and and you commit yourself then you abide in, 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 in the vine with the father and the son is the, the caretakers and 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 uh, uh, then that gospel that you have been obedient to when you change or become obedient if it even if it's this Sunday then you have become obedient to a gospel that was from the beginning and that gospel that is from the beginning has got this reward eternal life that's why it's john is so pertinent on this and he, he brings it so beautifully and 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 even it, as, as you brought john chapter john chapter 15 and galatians even colossians chapter 2 the, the, the traditions of men but still you need to abide in the lord and in the in, in jesus christ and so um uh, uh, when we read your uh, verses uh, uh, 26, 26, these things I have written to you concerning those who are trying to deceive you. And did it stop? Did the deceiving stop? No. That Satan, after he left Jesus, after he tempted Jesus there in the desert, he has never stopped. He's still at work and he's still plying his tools or his message or his ways amongst the people today. Therefore, we need, I want to say this, that you cannot for one day say, well, today I'm not going to walk with the Lord. This day is my day. I want to do what I want to do. Then you sort of cut yourself off from the vine and you make yourself liable to the, to satan and he's gonna grasp that opportunity because you are not covered you're not binded and so we must be very careful because the word here is that we must abide john is concerned about the because the people are preaching 
a false doctrine uh, that antichrist that do not believe that Christ is the the, the son of God who did and then he says this is the antichrist the one who denies the father and the son so you can't separate them um I was thinking last week uh, uh, uncle uncle um, Neil said uh, said we we just preach the father and we just preach the son but we do not preach the, the the Holy Spirit and and this came up to me as I was uh, listening because when we teach the Godhead then we make a triangle and by, okay say the top point is I and we put God there and we put by B the other uh, 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 corner uh, angle and make that point B. I say A is God, B is Jesus, then C is the Holy Spirit. But where is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is within you because the Holy Spirit is in you. So there where C is, that C point is the Holy Spirit, but it's you because uh, 1 Corinthians 6 um, that's first Corinthians 6 and verses. Uh, if I just go there quickly, verse 19 say, Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you have been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. So when you look at that triangle, when we explain or teach the Godhead, say A in the triangle, the top point is God. Yeah, at the bottom, uh, B, the other point, and C, Holy Spirit. There is the Holy Spirit. It's you. Holy Spirit is in you. And you abide in that triangle. Because if you have the Father, you have the Son, you have the Holy Spirit. And, and, and that is what this uh, John is teaching us here in um, John chapter 2. Let me just get there. As, you, as for you, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If you heard from the beginning, if what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise which himself made to us eternal life. That is the promise that all of us will receive when we abide in him. And then he says, my children, uh, well, these things I have written to you concerning those who are trying to deceive you. Brethren, church, there are those that are trying to, they're not preaching the pure gospel. Verse 27, and as for you, the anointing which you receive from him, that anointing is very important, abides in you. There is no anointing. People that lay hands on people, they come with false gospels, but they lay hands on people and say, I anoint you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. There's only one anointing, and that's the anointing of the truth. Uh, you, you, uh, and as for you, the anointing which you receive from him abides in you, and you have no need for anyone to teach you. Why you don't need anyone to teach you? Because you have been blessed. Um, you also read John 14, but you went to, you, you read just a Verses before that, uh, where the Bible says, Jesus says, I will send the, the helper to you. And uh, let me just, in conclusion, just read John 14, verse 26. I think you read verse 7. He uh, says, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may be with you forever. That is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it does not behold him or know him, but you know him 
because he abides with you and will be in you. Can you see? Yes, the gospel is the one that convinces us. And after the gospel has convinced us, we need that abiding, that, that bond of peace which will go with us until eternity. So, um, uh, right there, verse 28, and now little children, abide in him so that when he, is, uh, when, when he appears, we may have confidence and not shrink away. Some Bibles will pray and not be ashamed from him in, oh, there it is. Uh, let me just read. And now little children, abide in him so that when he appears, we may have confidence and not shrink away from him in shame at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone also who practices righteousness is born of him. Thank you, Mazi, for taking us um, through the, the gospel and explaining to us how we uh, need, what brings us to the abiding moment. And um, carry on. And it's time for us now to come to a, a closure. So I need also to ask, is there any questions? Brother Stephen, uh, good evening. Yeah. Uh, if you could read... Uh, hey, where are you? Uh, I hear you. Yes, if you could read uh, Galatians 6, verse 6 and 7. I hear you, Isaac. Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm talking. Can you hear me? Well, I don't hear you now. Can you hear me now, Brother Stephen? I hear you now, yes. Okay, can you read Galatians 6, verse 6 and 7, please? Is it Galatians or Galatians? Galatians, Galatians 6, yeah. 6, yeah. 6 and 7. All right. And let the one who is taught the word share all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, this he will also reap. Is that it? Yes, Brother Stephen. I just wanted to use that verse as All a right. final, uh, you know. Yes. Uh, What's uh, the time now? Let's get a time check. Fifty-three. Where's Isaac now? Is he finished? I'm finished, Brother Stephen. I just wanted oh. to give that one. Okay. All right. Anyway, thank you, uh, uh, brothers and sisters, for being with us this hour. I'm sorry I had, um, uh, I don't know what happened, but uh, I was no Wi Fi on the, on the <coughs> laptop. So I had to go to my phone so that I can be of help here tonight. Uh, because uh, Brother Paul instructed me to help you tonight. So thank you very much, uh, brothers. And tomorrow morning again, half past nine, it would be the sisters, and I will also stand in there for Brother Paul. So tomorrow morning, it is the sisters at half past nine, and um, um, uh, we're in the book of Esther. So um, we, we will continue with the... Um, the conduct of the woman in the uh, as as a Christian lady. That's tomorrow morning. So um, let's conclude with a prayer. Then I'll pray. Dear God and Father, we are so thankful that we had this blessed hour, that we could once again search the Scripture, and that we can be enlightened so we can learn that we need to continue striving uh, in the truth, that we uh, have the gospel that teaches us that we need to abide. If we have the Father, we have the Son. If we deny the Son, the Father is even not with us. So, Lord, in this time, I pray that we will not 
be hard-hearted, but we would be loving and kind and continue in the peace that you have left. He said, my peace I leave with you, not the peace as the world gives, but the peace that you provide. And so, Lord, this is that we will continue in spirit and in truth, for such seeketh also the Father that worships him in spirit and in truth. We are praying for our church. Okay, I think we lost Brother Stephen.